At the height of the Cold War, there were over 70,000 nuclear weapons in the world. Now, there are a little more than 13,000. How did the world get rid of 80% of our nuclear weapons? Well, even though the Cold War was marked by a nuclear arms race, the 1970s, 80s, and 90s were also filled with nuclear arms control talks. That diplomacy eventually started to turn the tide. But now, just one treaty remains to limit nuclear arsenals between the US and Russia, who control the world's two largest nuclear stockpiles, the New START Treaty, which stands for New Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, and is set to expire on February 4th, 2026. Are nuclear weapons treaties becoming a lost art? It's hard to definitively answer that question, but examining the New START Treaty and what's at stake if it expires is a good place to start. Starting in the 1970s, the US and the Soviet Union began a series of treaties on nuclear weapons. The most recent update, New START, was signed on April 8, 2010, and established limits on US and Russian deployed long-range nuclear forces down to 1,550 warheads and 700 delivery vehicles, the lowest in over 60 years. Delivery vehicles under New START include deployed intercontinental ballistic missiles, submarine-launched ballistic missiles, and heavy bombers equipped to carry nuclear weapons. It wasn't until far into the negotiations that Russia and the United States determined these numbers. Russia originally asked to keep more warheads, while the US asked to keep more delivery vehicles so that it could protect its advantage in that arena. New START also created an entirely new limit of 800 deployed and non-deployed launchers. Although this concept was originally introduced by Russia, the US eventually embraced the idea because it would prevent Russia from building and storing unlimited numbers of mobile missile launchers and provide the US with the flexibility to convert bombers to conventional use and overhaul submarines. Many experts think that the greatest success of New START is the verification processes and exchange of information that it established between the US and Russia. This allows both nations regular insight into the other's nuclear arsenals. It created a thorough verification regime, and this is also the basis of today's New START Treaty, the follow-on treaty to the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty. Russia and the US have promised to pursue negotiations in good faith on a successor framework to New START before its expiration in 2026. But that commitment so far appears to be blocked by the dispute over Russia's war in Ukraine. So, if the war in Ukraine does block any sort of negotiations or extension of New START, what will that mean for nuclear arms control? Allowing New START to expire would mean Russia and the United States would lose mutual predictability, and military planners would have to consider an increased worst-case scenario, starting with the possible upload of nearly double, or possibly more in the case of the United States, the total number of warheads on strategic delivery vehicles. Both sides would inevitably accelerate defense spending, resulting in an even more costly and unstable arms race. Unless both Russia and the United States soon put in proportional efforts to overcome the political forces stalling meaningful dialogue, February 5th, 2026, will be the first day since 1972 without substantive, verifiable limits on the world's two largest nuclear arsenals. In other words, anyone under the age of 54 will, for the first time, live in a world without strategic arms control.